I don't know who would have a cabbage," said Mummy. But then she answered herself, "Yes, I do. Mrs. Murphy was in line behind me at the supermarket yesterday. She had a cabbage in her wagon. Go and ask her if she could spare us a few leaves from it, if they haven't already eaten it." Mrs. Murphy lived on the ground floor. So the children took the elevator. Before long, they returned with the cabbage. It was added to the pot, together with a piece of meat cut off from the pot roast. Mummy was going to cook the next night when Daddy came home. All afternoon, the children took turns stirring the pot. The kitten had a lovely smell. It wasn't carrots or potatoes or meat or bully or cabbage. It was stone soup. When their favorite TV program began, they left the kitten, but the good smell followed them into the living room. At six o'clock, as Mummy was just about to serve supper, the doorbell rang. It was Mister and Missus Michael with Rosal. It was so nice of you to invite us to have supper with you. I love spurs, spur of the moment invitations. They are、uh, the most fun. Mrs. Michaels hand Mummy a pa- package of ice cream. I had these in the freezer, and I thought I would contribute it to the meal. As they stood at. The open door, the elevator door opened too. Mrs. W stepped out. She was wearing her best dress. Aren't you kind to invite a lo- lonely old woman to dinner on such a rainy, gloomy day? She said, handy, handing Mummy a box of imported cookies and a lovely tin. We can put our crayons in the box when it's empty," whispered Nora to Teddy. "Mummy looks very surprised, but she was also very polite. 'Let's all come inside,' she said. The guests come in, and Mummy rushed to get some more bowls. 'I hadn't finished setting the table,' she explained. The doorbell rang. It was Anita with a bottle of wine. I can't stay long. I have a date in about an hour. She appeals, guys, unless Paul would like to stay here. After Anita came, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Murphy. Mrs. Murphy carried a steaming platter of meat. There was already an oven when your children came downstairs, explained Mrs. Murphy. It tastes so much better hot. I hope you won't be offended that I brought it. Mummy looked at the platter. The meat was surrounded by brown potatoes. Mister Murphy stood next to his wife, holding a pitcher of gravy. They went into the dining alcove and they greeted the other guests. Teddy sat in his high stool, grinning happily, and Nora was handing out paper napkins. When the doorbell rang again, who else is coming? Mummy whispered to Nora. I don't know. We didn't ask anyone else. Mummy went to the door and opened it. It was Daddy. Surprise! He said. I was able to get away from the conference early. We have a surprise too," said Nora and Teddy, hugging Daddy. For supper, we are having stone soup. And company said, "Mummy, it was just like the book, and I would t- eat all the vegetables," promised Teddy. And the ice cream said, "Nora, Nora, the babysitter." Thursday and Fridays were always fun. Thursday was Mummy's day off. Mummy went out by herself, and Mrs. Michaels came upstairs with Russell and. Was the baby sisters? On Friday, Mrs. Michaels also came upstairs with Rosal. Only on that day, she left him and went out while Mummy was his baby sister. 
The apartment that Nora and Teddy lived in was a large one with more room for running out, which is why Russell came upstairs both days. Where are you going today? Asked Nora. She was watching Mum put on her earrings. There were special going out earrings that hung down, and she noticed that her mother had also put on lipsticks. I'm going to get a haircut," said Mummy, "and then I'm going to meet my friend Elsa at the Metropolitan Museum for lunch." Teddy was walking out about the room wearing Mum's good shoes. He watched her getting ready to go out, but he didn't cry. Every time Mummy and Mrs. Michaels began to exchange babysitting, he liked it when Mummy went out. Their mother looked at the clock. Nora, Miss Michaels will be here in five minutes. I have to stop at the bank, and I'm afraid there may be a long line, and I'll be late. Will you be a big girl and take take care of Teddy? Listen for the doorbell and ask who is it before you open the door. Nora said yes proudly. Sometimes Mummy left her alone for a few minutes. When she went to the laundry room and the basement, or to get the milk, it it made Nora feel very grown up, and Mummy said that it taught her responsibility. After all, soon, soon she would finish kindergarten, and then she would be in first grade. Teddy, Teddy kissed Mummy goodbye. Nora kissed Mummy goodbye on the lips. Holding some of the lipstick would come off on her. Then Nora sat on the sofa and pretend read a book. It was Madeline, and she knew everyone would, every word by heart. Just as fin- she finished, the doorbell rang. It's Mrs. Michaels," called Teddy from his bedroom. He was building a block bridge and was afraid to lift his hand. For fear that the entire structure would com- collapse, who is it? Nora asked from her side of the door. Russell and his mummy called the voice from the other side. Nora opened the door. There, st- there stood Mrs. Michaels. Instead of her usual slacks or n- and ponytail, she was wearing a dress, and her hair was pinned up on her head. Nora, sweetie. Thank your mother for changing days with me. I've got to run. I have a doctor appointment. See you at three o'clock, Russell," she said, kissing the top of her little boy's head. And suddenly she was inside the elevator and gone. Nora closed the door and woke up. Russell," she said, in a voice full of wonder, "Today I am going to have lots of responsibility." Russell smiled. He didn't speak yet, but Nora knew that he understood her when she spoke. He started to run to the children's room, and Nora went after him. She was just in time to keep him from crashing into bridge. This George Washington Bridge," said Teddy. "Don't you dare touch it." Here, Russell said Nora, grabbing some un- unused blocks on the floor. I help you to build the Brooklyn big bridge. Diverted, Russell sat on the floor, spilling up blocks. When the boys got tired of building, Nora offered to read to them. She pretended to read Madeline three times and Curious George two times. She she didn't she didn't miss a single word. Teddy would have to correct her if she had, because he also knew the story by heart. After reading so much, Nora was thirsty. She went to the refrigerator and took out a container of milk. Then she pushed a tray up close to the cupboard and took down the bottle of chocolate syrup. She made three glasses of chocolate milk, extra chocolate tea. The three children drank their glasses. You're a good baby sister," said Teddy, as he, 
as he rolled up his chocolate moustache. Watch for lunch. There was a pause, but only for an instant. P- peanut butter sandwiches. That's good, approved Teddy. The children always had peanut butter sandwich for lunch, whether it was Mummy or Mrs. Ba- Mrs. Michael babysitting. Lunch was very good, even though Rosie got peanut butter in his hair. Then they all played house. Teddy was the daddy, and Nora was the mummy. Of course, Rosie was the baby. Next, they played ball, rolling several balls to each other, all at the same time. And then Nora decided it was time for Rosie nap, but Rosie didn't seem at all tired. He kept running about, and he wouldn't lie down on either d- Teddy's or Nora's bed. Nora has an idea. Let's all lie down together on Mummy's and Daddy's big bed. The three children climb up on the big bed. First, they lay quietly, but then Teddy began to jump and bounce, and then Rosa start jumping too. Stop at this minute! Scream Nora in her loudest voice. She tried to sound like Mummy. You heard what I said, and you were making me very angry. Suddenly, even though she was the baby sister, and it was time for Rusa's nap, N- N- Nora couldn't help herself. She began to bounce on the bed too. Next, they all got down on the floor and did somersault, bumping into one another. They crawled under the bed, which was dark and spooky. And finally, they all felt tired, and they lay down on the big bed again. This time, they fell asleep. Nora opened her eyes first. There stood Mummy with a haircut and earrings and lipstick. And Mrs. Michael in her dress with her hair pinned up. They were both crying and laughing at the same time. It's my fault," said Mrs. Michael. "I forgot to mind, remind you that we were sh- switching days this week." "No, no," said Mummy, tears running down her cheeks. "It's all my fault. I should have remembered. I should, I shouldn't have left Rosa and run off." How terrible that I just went up leaving Nora and Teddy here all alone! How awful! Nora sat up in bed. Mummy, she said, beaming, it was wonderful. No one taught me to school, so I stayed home and I was a baby sister. Mummy hugged her and hugged her. Then Nora said, "Mummy, it was fun, but tomorrow I will need a day off."